You know, it's been really difficult dealing with what's on the news lately. This is Pat Love from with Pat's Two Cents and God's Word. Listen, no matter what you see law enforcement get away with, no matter how many people are incarcerated for their convenience, who don't deserve to be because they're serving for a crime they didn't commit, no matter what goes on, no matter how devastating it feels, how devastating it is, how unfair. Things in this country have been unfair from the very beginning, starting with the way the Native Americans have been treated. Secondarily, and even more severely, the way blacks have been treated. Thirdly, a lot of you aren't aware that Asians were treated like indentured slaves as well, and with disrespect. And when you look at the different races and the different people who have been victimized pretty much by one race, it makes you wonder, well, Lord, why is that one race so prosperous and so much in charge? Why? And you know, we really... We really get disillusioned. We really get discouraged by the fact that, you know, now, you know, I'm not saying everybody's evil that belongs to one race or to another, or everybody's saintly and victimized that belongs to any other races. My point is, there are people that hurt people that have been notorious for taking over and moving into other people's countries and totally destroying the, the, the natives of those countries, the inhabitants that were there way before they even knew there was a country there. But once they discovered it, they moved in and took over and treated the inhabitants like trash. I don't get that. I don't get why people feel justified, why they feel so entitled like it belongs to them. They go into a country in Africa and all of a sudden the Africans aren't even people. They're not worthy. But wait a minute, that was their home, not yours. I don't get that. But that's the way this country has been run right here in America. You know, they go in Africa, they go in other countries, they grab folks, bam, all of a sudden these people aren't even human. They belong to them, and they have the right to treat them any way they want. Then you get people, the Native Americans, who were, for the most part, honorable. They knew the land, and they were willing to share it. Some of them were willing, and they were the ones that got stabbed in the back. And you wonder, why? How, how does one group of people get away with so much injustice, almost in every country, I don't care where they go, they take over and the inhabitants get shoved down to the bottom of the totem pole. And these people that come in are running the government, running the money. I don't get it. And totally abusing the original inhabitants. So those are the things that bug me. And you know what bugs you. I also hate abuse. I hate seeing people abuse other people, whether it's male abusing female, female abusing male, mothers abusing their children, fathers abusing their children, parents molesting their children, men raping women. I mean, it just gets crazy. And we wonder, where is God in all this? We do wonder that. I've wondered it. I know where God is in my life. He's a very present help. So there's no question about him even being real because he has revealed himself to me in his supernatural love and done tremendous, oh my goodness, uh, uh, <laughs> an un, 
undescri indescribable, as I'm looking for the word, indescribable uh, amount of inner healing in my soul, in my heart, my mind, my spirit, my emotions. But what I can't wrap my head around is why do so many evil people get away with so much and seemingly get rewarded for it? Why do so many people who commit injustices to other people, how do they get to rule? How do they get to, to run things? See, those are, the, those are the issues I have. But here is the word that deals with that. And it may help you too. Because I have to go to this a lot when I'm frustrated with seeing atrocities and injustices and crimes on innocent victims and them paying for crimes they didn't even commit just because they, you know, the powers that be can do what they want to do when they want to do it. Listen to this. Psalms 37. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Pat's two cents. I got to go back on this. Verse three, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. It hit a nerve when I read it. And I want to say this to you. Whatever you need, whatever your desires are, whatever you long for, God will fill those needs. You will not have to go through life empty, dissatisfied, and frustrated because God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. He's aware of what we need before we even voice them. And it's, it, it's a delight for him as a loving father to supply. Okay, I'm going to move on. See, what I needed was love. God supplied that need. I needed to know that I know that I know that I am loved. God knew that was a deep need in me. He knows what your deepest needs are. He knows where you have been cheated as a child from basic needs. He knows. And he knows as an adult, those needs from childhood are still there. And if you go to him to fulfill those needs, he will. Okay, moving right along. I'm really trying to control my emotions. Listen to this. Verse 4, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. He knows your longings, and he knows when and how to deliver them to you. His timing is always of the utmost importance. Too soon, not good. Too late, discouraging. But he's a right on time God. That's Pat's two cents again. Back to the word. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Just give it to him. Give it all to him. Okay. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Verse 6. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers 
shall be cut off. But those that wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Like we talked about before, Pat's Two Cents. Remember some of that commentary? Wonder why some people get away with mistreating others for so many centuries. And they end up rich, while the victims end up poor or dead. Verse 15. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. Now, Pat's two cents again. This is the frustrating part. When? <laughs> but let me keep reading, because God's got this. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. Now, Pat's two cents. Anytime you see shall in the Bible, you can take that baby to the bank because God does not lie. Listen, verse 18. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke. They shall consume away. <laughs> hmm. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy, and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread? He is ever merciful, and lendeth his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They, sh they are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and shall dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches, watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. Yeah, we just talked about that, didn't we? The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Now, Pat's two cents. You will see it here in the land of the living and or in eternity. But either way, you shall see it. 35. I have seen the wicked in great power, spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet, he passed away. And lo, he was not. Yea, I have sought him. But 
he could not be found. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. Pat's two cents, I'm a witness to that because he has been my strength ever since I first stepped into his into his arena by inviting Jesus into my heart. God has been my strength. I have not had to handle things on my own. The reinforcements of God are crazy enormous if you just give him a chance. <sighs> I'm going to reread that one half of that verse. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Or, I, you know, Pat's two cents. I couldn't begin to tell you all the stuff God has delivered me from. But I'll just name two for right now. The feelings of worthlessness. He delivered me from that. That people inflicted on me. And the need for love. I have to add three. He delivered me one night in my living room from the root of rejection. And I have not been the same since. I have been so much freer. You know, we move from glory to glory and from strength to strength, which means this whole walk with God is progressive. We learn, we fail, we triumph, we graduate, we 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 progress, we grow. And we grow in areas we never thought we needed growth in. But I tell you, when God gets a hold of you, you get to know who you are, good, bad, and indifferent. And you start striving for growth and maturity and empowerment. And the reason we are empowered and we are delivered is because we trust in God, the one who loves us, the lover of our souls, the lifter up of our heads, our deliverer, our healer, our way maker. God makes a way where there is no way. He will give you favor from the very people who disrespect and hate you. And you will be shocked at the thing <coughs> Sorry. You will be shocked at the changes God will make in your life. God bless you. Keep that in mind.